Hello folks, welcome back. Uh, I'd like to cover two main concepts in this video uh, today. I'd like to cover a detail that I didn't explain to you about electrons and how they are organised around atoms. Because I sort of um, told you a slight porky pie, I just said they've fuzzed out in a big cloud. We're going to have a look at electrons and how they are arranged. Um, we're also going to have a look at something else to do with electrons. Electrons are the popular theme for today. We're going to have a look at what happens to an atom if you lose or gain electrons from it. So, electrons. What happens if you lose some down the back of the couch? Uh, or find some, in fact, in the strange drawer in the kitchen where all the junk hides? Or is it just my house that's got that? Certainly. Um, maybe it is. We'll find out when we go back. Of course, we can all talk to each other in, in sensible ways. Um, so let's start with number one. How they're arranged. And number two, what happens if they are lost or gained from an atom? What difference does that make? Okay, let's look at how they're arranged first. Oops. Um, they are, uh, let's pick, pick me a number please, uh, Mrs. Hay, from 1 to 20. 14. Good choice. Um, element 14 is silicon, in fact. I'm so sad, I don't even need to go and look that up. Um, element number 14 is silicon. It's given us the wonderful uh, thing called a transistor and a silicon chip, which, of course, uh, there's billions of inside your computer control, uh, your cent uh, central processing unit in your computer. Um, which is what's enabling me to make this film, of course. So, silicon, incredibly useful element. Now, the numbers for silicon are the following. If we were to look up... So, by the way, thank you very much for your task last time. Tons of people did a great job. And if I was to look up uh, the box, the symbol for silicon, it would look something like this. The symbol is SI. Um, the number at the top, the larger number, which is called the mass number, is 28. And the atomic number is 14. Now, if you remember from last time, we said that this number here tells us the protons. Boom. Which means I instantly know there are 14 protons in every silicon atom in the universe. That's what makes it silicon. So protons are actually completely in charge. They are what control which element you're actually dealing with. I have a chunk of silicon in my hand. Every single atom would have 14 protons in it. Um, I also said to you last time that... The a number of electrons in an atom is the same as the protons. Um, so we will also have 14 electrons. Now, if you were paying attention at the start of this video, I was talking about losing or gaining these. So that means, just for a change, this number, perhaps, not always fixed. But we'll come back to that in part two. Um, and the third type of particle... Uh, if I were to ask you to pause this video right now, could you tell me the third type of particle? Protons, neutron... Oh, my goodness. I've got a big mouth, even on video. I sometimes do that in the classroom. Just told you the answer, didn't I? <laughs> Moving on. The third type of particle is a proton. So I'm going to ask you a different question. If I were to pause this, if you were to pause this video here, could you tell me how to figure out the number of uh, neutrons um, from these two numbers? So if you pause the video, or just say it out loud in your head just now, and the answer is, well, if you add the number of neutrons to the number of protons, you get this. So you have to ask yourself, what do you add to 14 to get 28? In other words, it's a subtraction. So if we subtract 14 from 28, we get 14. So this element happens to have 14 protons, 14 electrons, and just 14 neutrons. Excellent. Now, I want to focus on these guys. I'm not sure green is the best colour to use for this. Just because it might not show up. Um, just in case you get any difficulties with the, with the old vision. So, maybe I'll switch over to uh, brown. Just for clarity. Um, also, if I was to ask you... If we, this was in class, by the way. we would uh, I would give you 30 seconds to discuss with the people at your table and say, can you remember the charge on each of these particles? And can you remember how heavy they are? So once again, you might want to pause this video um, and see if you could tell me that. What were the charges on these different particles and can you remember their masses? 
if you're back again with me after having tried that, I'm hoping that you will remember protons are positive and they have a mass of one. Um, neutrons are neutral, the clues in the name. Uh, so they are, they have no charge. They also have a mass of one. And electrons, we'll just stick with green for just now temporarily. Electrons are negative, so that's their charge. And they have a mass of more or less zero. Um, and atoms, as we saw last time, are so ridiculously small. People, tons of people came up with the correct answer for the size of a hydrogen atom, by the way. 120 picometers. Now, I would like to address in this video what the heck a picometer is. Um... A picometer is, <laughs> let me just get this in my head, hold on, uh, is zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That of a meter. So that's how small atoms are. Which is why we can't really see them. How do we know they exist then? There's a good question. Um, let's move on to these electrons and we might just get a clue in your task one for tonight. Stop raving here and go on with it. Okay, so previously we would have said that the 14 protons sit in the centre, the 14 neutrons are also in the centre in an area called the nucleus. And I said to you last time the electrons were just a big fuzzy cloud around about that. I'm going to, I'm going to retract that statement. I'm not going to tell you how they're organised. <coughs> Excuse me, I apologise. You know what, electrons? They're like ogres. To quote a line from Shrek. Um, they have layers. So, electrons have layers as well, as well as ogres, that is. Uh, and you can fit two electrons in the first layer. That's all you can fit in there, because it's the smallest layer. It's the closest to the nucleus of the atom. So let's pop a couple of electrons here and here. We'll just call them wee E's. Uh, could put a wee negative charge, couldn't we? Just to remind ourselves that they're negative. So, two electrons down. This layer is now full up. We need to skip up to the next layer. The next layer can hold eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if your counting skills are excellent, you'll realise that we're currently sitting at ten electrons and there are four left over that we haven't put in a layer yet. So that's okay. We'll skip up to the next layer because you can only fit eight in this layer. So two and eight. And then we have the outer layer of electrons. One, two, three, Four. There you go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 electrons in three different layers there, guys. So 2 and 8 and then 4. We can sometimes write it as this. It's called the electronic configuration or electronic arrangement. And we write it as 2, 8, 4. It's a heck of a lot faster than doing all this. So there you go. Learning outcome number one. Turns out that electrons don't just all stuff themselves into one place, they actually spread out in layers. We start filling from the inside layer and then we work it out. And you can fit two electrons in the first layer and then eight electrons in all, as far as you're concerned, all the layers past that. That's actually a slight porky pie. That's a bit of a simplification. So I'm going to ask you when you do this task one, not to go past element 20. Come back to me in sixth year and I'll tell you much more of the truth of this situation. But for the moment, to quote Jack Nicholson, he can't handle the truth. So we'll just stick with what we've got. Um, and that's my first learning outcome. Okay with that? Good. Let me pause you for just two seconds. Right, folks, let's have a look at the second outcome I wanted to tackle with you. Let's um, let's not go with element 14. Let's pick, pick me a different number, please, Mrs. A. Six. Six is... Uh, element six is... Yeah. Um, no, sorry. Pick me a different one again. 19. 19's a perfect one. Excellent. Um, 19 is a perfect one to be going with. Right. Element 19 is potassium. Once again, what a massive geek. You're stuck with me as a chemistry teacher. You must have done something really bad in a previous life. Um, so uh, we're going to go with element 19. 19 is potassium. Um, and we are talking about losing or gaining electrons here. There's two questions I'd like to tackle in this. Number one is, why does this happen? Uh, and number two is, what effect does it have on the atom? Those are the two questions I would like to tackle about losing or gaining electrons. Why on earth would an atom ever lose or gain? And what effect does it have on the ones left behind? 
All right. <clears throat> We're going with the element 19, which is potassium. Now, um, we're not really interested in neutrons here. If you're interested, by the way, the mass number is 39. Again, I'm so sad, I don't even have to look that up. Um, but we're not really interested in neutrons, so this doesn't concern us so much. This really does, though. This is a potassium atom. Now, we, we, we can see from this that it's got 19 protons, which are positive, and it's got 19 electrons. Because I said to you, all atoms start off with, oops, he sneaked that phrase in now. Didn't have that phrase before. He just said 19 uh, protons would mean 19 electrons. The atom starts off with 19 electrons. That is very, very true. <coughs> My apologies, folks. <clears throat> However, we also know something special about these electrons now. We know the, how they are arranged. Now, I, I'm going to ask you once again to pause this video. Can't prove you're doing this, of course, but I know you guys, you're conscientious and you'll have a go at it. Um, I'm going to ask you to pause this video and try and work out how these 19 are arranged in all the little layers. Have we think about it? So if you pause the video, try and give me the answer. And then come back to me. I'm hoping that you will realise that they will be arranged as 2. And then 8. That gives us 10 so far. And then another 8. 2, 8, 8. That's 18. We've only got one left over, so there'll be 1. In the outer electrons and of course yep i'm not forgetting 19 positives here in the center that's the protons and these are all electrons now here is the rule for or here's the answer to why atoms would want to lose or gain electrons it turns out that stable atoms if they're stable and nice and happy they have a full outer layer so in order for an atom to be stable it wants to have a full outer layer of electrons. So let's ask ourselves a question here. Does this potassium atom, potassium atom, sorry, have a full outer layer of electrons? No, it does not. Most definitely not, because I said to you that we can fit two in the first one and eight in all the layers. <coughs> so that is obviously not full up. Any way we could perhaps give this thing here, give this atom, and a, a smiley face, because at the moment, it's not got one. What could we do with that one electron, do you think? Is there a clue here? I'm hoping you're shouting at the screen and saying, well, that's okay, just get rid of that electron. Remove it entirely. And then we would have, let's redraw this, because it's worth redrawing it. Um, we've got 19 protons still, and 2, 8, Eight electrons. We deleted that last one. Oh look, our outer layer is now full up, which means this atom is stable and we can give it a smiley face. In fact, if we match the hair that I've currently got, we get that smiley face. Um, so, why would an atom lose or gain electrons? It would lose or gain electrons to make sure that its outer layer is now totally full. Why does that happen? Because, well, Again, come back in sixth year and ask me why that should be. But you have to just uh, accept this, I'm afraid. I don't like saying that in science, but you do for the moment. That uh, if an atom wants to be stable, then its outer layer has to be entirely full of electrons. And the easiest way to do it for potassium is to just kick one off. I suppose you could you gain seven? Yeah, maybe. But let's just lose one. It's the easier option. Let's go with a smaller number. Um, I'm going to give you another example of losing or gaining. In order to give a full outer layer, this time I'm going to go with a chlorine atom. Chlorine is across at the other side of the periodic table, it's a group 7, it's one of the halogens. This one that my wife picked was an excellent choice actually, because that's group 1, that's the alkali metals. So we're skipping right across to the other side of the table now. Feel free to have a periodic table beside you if you want to double check this. Um, chlorine. So let's do chlorine this time. Last time we had potassium, let's keep the method similar if I can. So chlorine's numbers are 17 and 35, which means a chlorine atom has got 17 protons. Why does he keep putting the charge in? We know what the charge is. Ah, it's going to be very relevant, honestly, especially for my second answer. I remember what effect does it have on the atom? So 17 protons is going to have 17 negative electrons. 
as well. And they will be arranged like this. Once again, you could pause the camera, uh, pause the video, sorry, and then you could try and figure out how these 17 electrons are arranged in their little layers. Um, we're going to have 17 in the centre, and then we're going to have 2, 8, that gives us 10, and then 7. Now we can see again that this is unhappy atom time. That is not full up. It's nearly full up though. It's very nearly. So what we could do is we could gain an electron from somewhere. Where does it come from is a good question. We'll come back to that in a different video. Um, we could gain an electron uh, and we could have this situation. 17 protons, 2, 8, 8. Excellent. Happy atom time. Right, we're nearly there. I'm hoping that you can realise that we lose or gain electrons in order to make the outer layer of a particular atom fill up, and this makes the atom nice and stable. My second question was, what effect does this have? Well, I'm going to go back to potassium and chlorine, and we're going to have a look at this effect, because this is why I kept bashing on about the charge earlier on. If you have a look at this, this guy now, this guy's got 19 positives and only 2, 8, 18 negatives. Now, I don't know how good your arithmetic is, but if you have 19 positives and 18 negatives, if you add them together, you find that it now has a charge of 1, and it's plus. So we have lost an electron, and now the whole atom has got an unequal balance of positive and negatives. It's no longer an atom, folks. We've got a new name for this thing that we've created. So losing or gaining electrons means we've changed the name for this slightly. We change it into what is called an ion. So an ion is just an atom which has lost or gained electrons. In this particular case, it has lost one electron. The electrons are negative. That means it's got less negatives than positives, which means it is now overall a positive ion charge of 1 plus on this particular ion. Let's do the same balancing act with positives and negatives. Let's do it on chlorine now. So we had 17 positives. We still have 17 positives. We've got 2 and 8, and now we've got 18 negatives. Now this time round, we've got more negatives than positives, which means this is, once again, no longer an atom. This is an ion. Um, this time round, this particular ion has got a charge of one negative. So this is a negative ion. Quick recap on that. Where did this word ion come from? This word uh, describes a, what used to be an atom, which had equal numbers of electrons and protons. We now no longer have equal numbers. What effect has that made on it? Well, we can have either a positive or a negative charge, and now we call them ions. Let me give you one more example of this, and then we'll draw to a close for tonight. The one more example of this is going to be magnesium. Magnesium's numbers are 12 and 24. 12 protons. 12, <coughs> excuse me, negative electrons. At the moment, of course, 12 positive, 12 negatives, zero, no charge. But if we were to draw these electrons out, you'll find they're going to look like this. So 12 positives in the centre, 2, 8, 2. Um, not full. So let's do the same trick with magnesium. Um, as we did with uh, potassium earlier on. Let's give this a full outer layer by deleting. Let's just get rid of these two electrons entirely. Just fire them off free. Now 12 positives and only 2 and 8 is 10 negatives now. That means we have two more positives than negatives. That is a charge of two positive. So this is a magnesium ion and its charge is um, 2 plus. plus. 
Okay with that, folks? Here's task one, folks. Task one is a fun graphical thing that I'm going to get you through. I'm going to get you to start with a blank sheet of A4, if you can. Grab yourself a pen or a pencil, and what we're going to do is we're going to do a super quick sketch of the periodic table. Now, if you're not sure what it looks like, that's perfectly understandable. You could, of course, do what a couple of other people did. Uh, I saw them do, which is very impressive, which was to uh, print out a periodic table for themselves. But what you can do is copy what I'm going to do on screen here. So we're going to miss the... Ch there's a... Excuse me, just two seconds, sorry. So um, if you want to follow my diagram here, you're welcome to. We're actually going to skip the chunk in the middle, the transition metals, if you remember from the last video, because they are really complex. And anyway, they're past number 20, because I didn't want you to go past element 20. So let's just one, two, miss a few, 99, 100, as the phrase goes. Um, so we're going to have, that's group one, group two, group three, four, five, uh, I didn't plan this very well, six. Ooh, it's going to be tight, but I think we'll be okay. Seven and eight. I'm sure you can do a better job of that than I did. So what I would like you to do, guys, please. That's hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine. I'm so sad. Uh, neon. Uh, you can go and look these elements up. And what I would like you to do is I would like you to fill in the electron arrangement for each of these elements, right down to the first 20. Let's do up to number 20, actually. 19 and 20 are here. So there we go. So that's one. That's element 20. Um, let me give you an example of this. If we were going to pick... Um, oops. If we are going to pick um, aluminium, for example, which is here. Aluminium is, uh, is an atomic number 13, which means its electrons will be 2, and then 8, and we're full up, and then 3 in the next layer. Now, this would not tax your brains. I know you names, guys, there's a few very clever names in here, so this is not going to be too much of a test for you. But I would like you to spot as many patterns as you can. There are patterns, once you do this, you'll start to see some patterns that are, I think are up to about five patterns that you could be spotted. So I'll put a blank document in this assignment, and you can say to me, what patterns are there? In other words, is there a link between how the electrons are arranged, and where the element is on the table. That's what I'm looking for when I say patterns. I don't want to give you any of these away. So, you know what? This is the basic assignment. This is an extension. If you can't do the extension, don't sweat it, guys. Um, is there a link between how the electrons are arranged... ...and where the element is on the periodic table. This sounds really... If I was in the classroom, I could start to give you hints for this. Um, so we're looking for a link between the particular setup for the electrons and whereabouts this element... I'm giving you a hint there, of course. Whereabouts the element is on the periodic table. See if you can do that as an extension, please. Uh, I'll be very grateful. Thank you. That's task one. So we'll run through that again, just in case you missed it. I would like you to write the electron arrangements of all the first 20 elements. If you can't, uh, you can pause the video here, guys, and you can copy what I've done on the screen. You'll probably do a neater job of it. Don't worry about any of these, of course. Don't worry about anything past number 20. Task two, folks. Um, so task one, that was this. Would help if I labeled these, wouldn't it? Um, and task two is I would like you um, to pick um, from the first 20 elements I would like you to pick uh, three metals, please. And I would like you to pick three non-metals. Um, the only proviso to this is I want nothing from group 4, please. Don't pick anything from group 4. 
which is ironically and fascinatingly the two that my wife picked, just randomness earlier on when I asked her to repick. So I don't want anything from this column here. This is group four. So it's fine for task one, but don't use anything from here in task two. So I'd like you to pick three metals and three non-metals. And I would, what, what you're gonna do with these once you pick them, I would like you to draw the atom. So that's A, task two A. I would like you to draw your atom, Z, of course, you're gonna have three of them. And then B, I would like you to change their electrons. <clears throat> I would like you to change the electron layers so that the outer one is full up. Sometimes that will involve losing electrons, sometimes it will involve gaining electrons. And then I would like you to draw the ion. And I would like you to say what charge it would have. So basically, what I'm asking you to do is what I did on this sheet here. Obviously you can't use potassium. That would be a touch too easy, wouldn't it? So pick three uh, metals, please, three non-metals. I would like you to draw out the atom, which is what I had here. And then I would like you to change its electrons so they're full up in the outer layer. And I would like you to work out what charge is going to be on that ion for me, please. So six ions overall of your choice. Don't pick anything from group four. If you're interested, you could actually have a look at Group 4. You don't have to do this, but the brighter amongst us can have a look at Group 4. Maybe you can work out why. <laughs> that might cause you a headache. Okay, so that's... A